Schmendrick hardly noticed when they sprang on him and seized his arms, nor did he flinch when Kali pricked his ribs with a dagger, hissing: "That was a dangerous diversion, Mr. Child, and rude as well. You could have said you didn't want to hear the songs." The dagger twitched deeper. Far away he heard Jack Jingly growl: "He's na child, Kali, nor is he any journeyman wizard neither. I know him now. He's Haggard's son, the Prince Lear, as foul as his father and doubtless handy with the black arts. Hold your hand, Captain. He's no good to us dead." Kali's voice drooped. "Are you sure, Jack? He seemed such a pleasant fellow." Pleasant fool, you mean. Aye, Lear has that air, I've heard tell. He plays the gormless innocent, but he's the devil for deception. The way he gave out to be this child cove, just to get you off your guard. I wasn't off my guard, Jack, Cully protested. Not for a moment. I may have seemed to be, but I'm very deceptive myself. And the way he called up Robin Hood to fill the lads with longing and turn them against you. Ah, but he gave himself away that time, and now he'll bide with us, though his father send the red bull to free him. Cully caught his breath at that, but the giant snatched up the unresisting magician for the second time that night and bore him to a great tree, where he bound him with his face to the trunk and his arms stretched around it. Schmendrick giggled gently all through the operation and made matters easier by hugging the tree as fondly as a new bride. There, Jack Jingly said at last. Do you guard him the night, Cully, whiles I sleep? And in the morning it's me to old Haggard to see what this boy's worth to him. Happen we'll all be gentlemen of leisure in a month's time. What of the men? Cully asked worriedly. Will they come back, do you think? The giant yawned and turned away. They'll be back by morning, sad and sneezing, and you'll have to be easy with them for a bit. They'll be back, for they're not the tra type to trade something for nothing, no more than I am. Robin Hood might have stayed uh, for us if we were. Good night to you, Captain. There was no sound when he was gone but crickets, and Schmendrick's soft chuckling to the tree. The fire faded, and Cully turned in circles, sighing as each ember went out. Finally, he sat down on a stump and addressed the captive magician. Haggard's son you may be, he mused, and not the collector child as you claim. But whoever you are, you know very well that Robin Hood is the fable, and I am the reality. No ballads will accumulate around my name unless I write them myself. No children will read of my adventures in their school books and play at being me after school. But when the professors prowl through the old tales, and scholars sift the old songs to learn if Robin Hood had ever truly lived, they will never, never find my name not till they crack the world for the grain of its heart. But you know, and therefore, I am going to sing you the songs of Captain Cully. He was a good gay rascal who stole from the rich and gave to the poor. In their gratitude, the people made up these simple verses about him. Whereupon he sang them all, including the one that Willie Gentle had sung for Schmendrick. He paused often to comment on the varying rhythm patterns, the assonant rhymes, and the modal melodies.